What do you say, you fish heads? Harley here on Roger DeMet. And today, uh, kind of a different video for you. We're uh, kicked back. Action's kind of slow today, so we decided we might run over something in case you're uh, following these videos or whatever and you're new to catfishing. Well, we're going to talk today about the top mistakes and uh, top things that you can do to improve your chances of catching fish. I'll start it off here. One of the most important things. Well, actually, these are all very important things, so they all kind of go together into one big important blob. Let's talk about fishing line. Uh, we use good heavy fishing line. We use, I use 40 pound test. What do you have on yours, Roger? Uh, mostly 40. Is it 40? Yeah. Uh, I got some 50. Yeah. And, uh, and I got 30. You, I'll do you. <laughs> yeah. I've got a good variety of stuff there. And if you're new to fishing or haven't uh, discovered how to use your drag yet, you know, a 30 pound fishing line, you can catch a 100 pound fish if you, you know, if you baby it and, and, and let the equipment do its work. But uh, one of the most important things is at least once a season, I change all the line on all my fishing poles because yep. it's, fishing line's like bread, it just goes bad after a while. And, that is true. And uh, to quote Chris Souders, you may have fish for a lifetime out there and some old junky line uh, just breaks on you and breaks your heart too. So uh, I mostly use almost exclusively now Berkeley Big Game uh, 40 pound test so uh, that's my first thing I've got for you. What you got Roger? My, my first thing is because uh, I'm fairly new myself so I, I mean I've fished for catfish my whole life and I hate to admit that at one point in time I, I did do pay lakes uh, but I really had a desire to catch big fish and unfortunately that was with my knowledge that was the best place I, I had an opportunity. Um, but the biggest mistake I made when I first started out, and I've only been doing it a couple of years, is uh, try to try to mimic the pros and jump right in the, to doing what they're doing. And uh, you know, these guys have been working. You got you muddy river cat run, just taking a working. Uh, that's a stick. Uh, the pros, you know, they've been working on it for a long time, and they've they've figured out what works for them, what don't work for them, uh, and it ain't always going to be what works for you. And, uh, you know, so I found that, you know, trying to find your own way uh, as you do things and not trying to go out and buy the top notch gear, you know, that name brand rod, that name brand reel. You got to stick on this one. Something crazy going on here. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're watching our lines here. I apologize. We're watching, we got yeah, we're, we're still we're still fishing. So I, I might look like I got AD, yeah, heads on a swivel. ADD <laughs> and I do. Um, but now don't go out and try to, to buy all the top of the top of the line stuff. Uh, there are places that that you can get away with, um, you know, cheaper alternatives and still have a great time and put big fish in a boat. Uh, and there are some things that you don't want a shortcut on. Um, but for me, my first my first mistake jumping into the you know the competitive world or the trophy size catfishing was trying to copy everybody. Right? I'm not Steve Douglas. I'm not Chris Souders. Uh, I'm Roger and you know try to find what worked for me and I see a lot of people you know jump into it and they spend a ton of money uh, on gear and it's not necessary. Yeah unless, unless you're addicted like we are and you have to have 10 or 12 poles. We do have a lot of poles. We have good gear now but you know when a fish comes up and bites your line he don't care what kind of fishing pole you got. Nope. He don't care whether you got 80 pound four hundred dollars for a, a spool of you know, 20 pound test line, he don't care about all that. He just cares that the bait's in front of him. So yeah, you don't need all that good gear. Uh, one, another tip I've got for you here, a lot of times guys don't check their hooks for sharpness. They make a little bitty triangular shape and I, I could almost get mine here. If it, no, it's not here, it's back there. Hook sharpener, little hook sharpener costs you about $2. And actually you can reuse hooks a ton of times. Just make that hook good and sharp and of course, duh, if the hook's good and sharp, it penetrates the mouth, the fish's mouth easier. So uh, that's my next tip there. That's a good one. What else you got? Oh, I got all kinds of stuff. Okay. Uh, so when we said that, when we said that, um, you know, that fish don't care about your rod, they don't care about your reel, they don't care about your boat. Uh, this is a 1983 Sylvan. Uh, you know, it's not a Sea Arc, it's not a Storm Cat, and no matter how, how bad I'd like to have one of those big expensive boats. Uh, that's not in my budget and the fish don't care the only thing they care about is the bait and fresh bait and you know, it's repetitive because you hear 
most everyone else say the same thing, but it's a reason for it. Bait is the only thing that fish care about. That's it. Everything else is up up to you and your your ability to, to work a fish. You got something? No, I was just going to say that that piece of bait, that is your connection to the fish. Yeah. I mean, the fish goes out and you go out fishing, what's the one thing that brings you two together? Bait. It's bait. And, and you get the best, freshest, take care of your bait. Uh, a lot of folks aren't aware, they'll go out and they'll catch some bluegill or something or skipjack or moon eye or something like that and throw them in a bucket and, you know, take them fishing the next day or whatever, maybe put just a little bit of ice on them or something and wonder why they don't have the success that they, you know, they expect. When you catch a bait fish like that, as soon as you take them out of the water, they start breaking down. They start rotting. I mean, they're, they're dead. But, and what happens to the things whenever they're dead? It, it starts to decay. Uh, fish, catfish especially, and, and once again, this is aimed at you guys that are just getting started. Uh, you may have heard catfish are old trash eaters, you know, and junk like that and everything, and they, and they absolutely are not. Uh, now, channel cats, I'd say of the three channel cats, probably eat the biggest variety of junk that you can throw at them. Yeah. And we don't we don't generally target uh, channel cats, but but you take a couple of the other species, blue cats or uh, flathead catfish. Flathead catfish love live bait. You know, that's that's fresh, good bait. And uh, an important lesson that you'll need to learn. You'll need to have, learn how if you if you actually want to use really good bait fish, uh, learn how to make a slurry. You can take water in a cooler and put a bunch of ice in it to where it's just barely, where you can just barely stick your hand in it. Pour a bunch of ice in there, or not ice, but salt rather. Salt lowers the freezing point of the water. So whenever you catch your bait fish or something, stick them in that stuff as soon as possible. It, it almost flash freezes them and, and, and that's super good bait. Super good bait is super important. Uh, I, I know people who are championship fishermen who have won a lot of tournaments and everything and they'll tell you the same exact thing bait is one of the most if not the if you had to say probably bait is the most important thing nothing else really matters to being set nothing really matters <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving along here what else we got um, ah so whenever you, so you catch a big fish you brought him in and you're happy and you're taking pictures and everything and you got all done and you released it or whatnot and then uh, just bait up your line crack out another cast one thing to keep in mind, after you catch a fish, or actually every time you go fishing, whenever you get ready to put your bait on or whatever, take and run your hand down your line. Fingernail. Chafes or, or nicks or something like that. Fingernail. Yep. And uh, check that out and make sure that that fish hasn't drugged you against something and uh, weaken your line or whatever. So that, that's an important thing. What else you got there? No, I, I agree with that. Um, if, you've ever, if you've ever seen guys after they put their hands in a, a big catfish's mouth, they brag about their bloody knuckles and their, you know skin ripped off. There, it's like 50 grit sound sandpaper in the side of that that fish's mouth. And when he get hits that line, there's a good chance his his mouth is running across the, your line. And uh, you want to check out for abrasion and not just the rocks and things that he could have hit on the way in or fighting, but his his mouth alone. His mouth. That, that's, that's a really good point there. Too. Is a. Because it's, if you ever had your mouth or you had your hand in a big old like a blue cat. In a blue cat's mouth, man, it's like it's unreal. They don't have teeth. They have they have pads. I don't know exactly. I'm not I'm like a, not a biologist or anything. I don't know what what their mouths are called, where the where the texture is. But they're designed right. to grab stuff and hang on. Fish are notoriously slimy, uh, and a lot of you know blue cats and uh, all all the catfish and everything catch other fish. And fish are slick. They've developed mouths that will just bite on, and yeah, they'll tear up your line and uh, keep, keep checking that line. Um, after you cast your line out, give a tug, learn how your drag works on your, on your, uh, on your fishing rig. It's one of, your, one of your best friends. You can take a light line, like I said earlier, and, and catch a really, really huge fish. But after you crank your line out there, I mean, if you, if you check your drag, the next time you go fishing, you may pull on it, it may not move. Drag is notorious for locking down I don't know why it does that. If, if they get wet or moisture or something, some of them are like that. If they sit, if they sit for a little while, uh, they'll get hung up. You got to kind of give them a good tug, and, yeah, and you may have to back them way off and yeah. get them loose and, and do that. But, but check that drag. You know, put a put a good pull on it. And make sure that your drag's working properly. Uh, and we went over uh, retie your knots regularly too. I mean, you, I mean, it's easy 
I go in my garage and I got my poles all hung up and everything and grab them. They're already rigged up and everything, and it's easier for me to just go to the river and start fishing or the lake or wherever I'm at. But uh, believe it or not, about every second trip, I go in, cut everything off, and usually I'll take off. I mean, it, my line may not be chafed up or anything, but I just feel better if I peel off about eight or ten feet, you know, and just make sure my line's good. Retie, re-rig everything, make sure everything's ready to go because, you know, that's important stuff whenever you're hossing in 30, 40, 50 pound fish and you have a uh, you have a knot that gives up on you or a little <laughs> nick or something. And uh, here's another thing for you to keep in mind too. Uh, most of your decent catfish rods will run you $60, $70, $60, $70, $80, some of them. I mean, there's there's higher end ones and there's cheaper, but generally most of the gear we use costs you about 80 bucks each. Uh, when you get ready to travel or something, a lot of folks will rig up like a Carolina rig and um, that one's got a... This is a no-roll sinker. You rig this up, you run your line down through it, and then you put your uh, uh, you put your swivel in here, here and your hook and et cetera on down the line here. But the problem with these is I don't even use these anymore. When you got them, got them tied up on your rig, when you get done, you have to either cut the line or untie something to get these off. Well, when you're traveling, these dudes are swinging around, hitting your $80 fishing pole, and what happens? You get a little bitty chip or a nick in that side of that fishing pole. And today's materials are so technically advanced, they work wonderfully. But if you take one and you knock a chunk out of it or something, you put a lot of pressure on it and it's liable to break. So if, if you want to cut them off every time you use them to keep from nicking your stuff, you can get away from doing that. <laughs> Funny thing here, I, Roger Roger found that showed showed me one of these little eye bolts the other day. He said, "You know what these are good for?" And I said, "Yes, I do because we both use them the same way." If you got a bunch of these and you don't like using them anymore, check this out. Such yeah. a great tip right there. You can buy those little eye screws, screw them in there. Like a dollar. Yep. Like you can get like five or six of them. Yeah, you can. Uh, Turn all those no rolls into like bank bank sinkers, and guess what? Here's your uh, sinker slide, bam, instant sinker slide, and then you can take it off when you get finished. So, so keep that in mind. Take care of your gear. Try not to bang them up too much. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Um, uh, I'd say, uh, you know, that this this is just something new for, uh, you know, or for newer guys is to, uh, how to handle those fish. So you see a lot of guys they they get their fish of a lifetime or their personal best uh, to the boat and they have a hard time with it um, you know if they if they're lucky enough to get it to the boat and get it in the boat um, you know handling it whether it's using you know me I, I don't like to use uh, like the Boca grips or the plastic grips or any type of grip on the jaw uh, of a fish over 20 pounds um, under 20 pounds I, I believe it's, it's probably okay uh, but over 20 pounds that's a lot of stress and pressure uh, to put on one little tiny spot on that on that fish's mouth yeah roger caught a fish about 25 pounds just here about what three weeks or a month ago and you pulled it up and the fish's jaw was jaw broken. was broken in half yeah uh, i don't think i don't think i've got a video of that we i i didn't have uh, i didn't have much video equipment with me that day uh, but it was the jaw was broken in half right in the middle where you would expect um, a grip to be now i don't know if that was it but you know you want to get a good grip on those fish and not drop them on the floor um, and have them you know bouncing and banging off of everything yeah. um, you got to think when those fish are in the water the only weight they're used to you imagine how much you weigh in water so i'm sure we've all done it we've been in a swimming pool and uh you know somebody climb up on your shoulders or you pick them up out of the water and they don't weigh much in the water but as soon as you bring them up out of the water they're heavy again now those fish are only used to their body weight being in the water uh, the only time they're ever not going to feel that way is when we catch them. And so. here's another thing for you. Here's a tip. I'm going to tell you one time, and I'm going to tell you one time only. Keep your hands out of the fish's gills. The gills are what transfers the water, the oxygen out of the water into usable oxygen for them. And you start reaching up in it and touch it, and their, their gills are no, notoriously delicate. Don't, they're not handles. Fish's gills are not handles. They're a place to be avoided at all costs. Do not stick your hand up in the fish's gills. Um, like, like Roger was saying, if you, if you do catch a big fish, if, if you can, uh, keep it in the net. Wrap it up in the net. One of, one of the recent videos with me and Roger, uh, I think the picture shows you with a nice big fish on the thumbnail if you get a chance to watch that. But Roger shows you, you can take a net and roll a fish up in it, like especially when you get ready to weigh it or whatnot. Yeah. 
and that controls the fish really well. Uh, we practice CPR and we're pretty adamant about it. I mean, we're not, we're not tree huggers. We're not out here singing kumbaya and, and blocking <laughs> whaling ships or anything, but we, we do take care of the fish that we go after. Uh, if you pay lake, uh, find out where those fish come from. S some folks watching may do pay laking or whatnot. Uh, stop doing that. Don't support pay laking in any way, shape, or form. You got commercial fishermen out here and, and other people actually supplying fish to pay lakes and uh, they're robbing the rivers, they're taking those fish, putting them into certain death. They go out in these ponds, they're, you, you take a river fish and you stick him in a little one or two acre pond, put him in there for a little while, and he gets doped up once a week or more to just make them bite. Those fish don't last very long in there. So if you pay like, find out about where those yeah, fish just... are coming from. Find out a little bit about it. And, and, and actually, myself, Roger's pay like before, you know, a lot of folks have done it until yep. You know, the light bulb goes off. Where do these fish come from? Oh, they're coming from the river. Find out about that and rethink that if you do, because we don't support Pay Lake in any way, shape, or form. No, Amen. no, I completely agree. Um, it, and for most folks, it's not, it's not that they don't care about fish and whatever. They just don't realize or don't understand the, just how bad it is. And, you know, like, yeah, they're coming from the river, but the river's full of fish. I mean, it can't be that bad. Uh, it really is that bad. Yes. Um, you could go back years and years and look at tournaments or studies done on the river and watch the steady decline of, uh, of trophy-sized catfish uh, just right here in the Ohio River. Uh, and it gets worse and worse, uh, you know, depending on which way you go. And, you know, for the most part, it's, and I'm guilty, it was, it was a lack of knowledge. It was, um, you know, so if, if you fish pay lakes or you got a buddy at fish pay lakes, don't go say, oh, don't do that. Harley said no. Uh, you can say that, yeah, you can. but, uh, but, but do some research on it. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of information's out there information out there. Um, there's even groups out there to you know, kind of bring to light, um, what the pay lakes have done or are doing to their, to fisheries and, uh, just kind of make yourself knowledgeable and yeah, just summarize, summarize it all for you though. Pay lakes are bad news. Stay away from them. That's the way we feel about it. And, and we we feel pretty strongly about that. Yeah. Um, uh, you got anything else you want to talk about right now? Hmm. I, I don't either, but uh, I tell you what, if you guys are watching here, uh, we'd appreciate it if, if we skipped over anything that you, you think, you know, we're, we're aiming this toward the new guy or new gal getting into catfish and everything. A little bit of help getting them, you know, as they move forward into their catfishing career. Uh, if you guys have any tips you think that, think that we missed or whatnot, leave a comment below, you know, leave it in there. And, and if you folks are watching, be sure and read all those comments and everything. Uh, and by the way, channel is getting close to about a thousand subscribers. I'm tickled to death. It's taken a couple, three or four years to build the <laughs> channel up here. And it's, by golly, I've almost got a thousand subs now. And I do appreciate y'all uh, tuning in all the time and supporting the channel and this and that. And it's, you know, that, that's really helped a lot. So. Uh, we just, this is kind of our fig leaf out there to reach out to you folks starting out. Uh, you old timers watching right now, if you're still watching the video after all this time. They're laughing. They're, well, <laughs> if they're laughing, but they're still thinking about, well, let's see, let, let me put this comment down here. Do it, man. Leave a comment for those kids yeah. and everybody starting out catfishing. And uh, hopefully if we get out there and, you know, save one fish or, you know, make somebody handle a fish a little bit better and, and give it a better chance for survival because... I don't actually. I don't like to eat catfish. I don't like the way catfish taste. But man, I like, I like catfish. I do like to catch them. I yeah. I kiss them, catch them, catch them, kiss them, and then kick them back in the water. Man, I, that's CPR. Catch, photo, and release. And we practice it. And then uh, we've yammered on probably long enough to hear about this today. Probably well, yelling long enough. But when when Harley said <laughs> something about uh, leaving comments, um, you know, you can comment whether you like or don't like, or you can uh, ask questions. And that's my kind of last thing I'll close with is if you've got questions, you know, don't be afraid to hit up one of these guys that have been proven to, to, uh, be successful. Um, you know, I know Chris Souders is a friend of mine, but I'd say a ton of people would call him a friend. Uh, but Chris Souders, um, you know, Chris Flores, um, you catfish know, and carp, catfish and car you know, there's, there's so many of those guys out there yep. and they put these videos out because, they enjoy doing it. They enjoy sharing their experiences or knowledge, and uh, they have no problem typically uh, of lending advice or whatever. Don't be afraid to reach out. Yeah, uh, and, 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 and the thing we were talking about earlier today, we were talking about Chris Siders a lot because we, we both fish with him and live right next to him here. Uh, 
Chris has helped me tons and tons. And that guy, you know, he's a two-time national champion. Chris will tell you what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right. But you know what? What it all boils down to, Chris wants you to catch fish too. Yeah. I mean, it's no big secret or anything. He enjoys doing that. And uh, if you'll look down here over to the side on my channel, uh, there's a link to his channel, Slunger Cat Outdoors. Uh, uh, links to all the other guys we talked about here. John Knoll, can't forget John. Yeah, John's really good uh, too. Shout out to you there, John. And uh, all those guys. Uh, so, you know, if you're looking for information, Myself, Roger, and our circle of friends, we're fortunate that we know a lot of really good cat fishermen. Occasionally, we get lucky, but uh, we like to just help out too. So, uh, you know, in case we didn't cover anything today, if you old timers or somebody that thinks of something that we didn't cover today, leave a comment below, share it with the youngsters and all the up and comer cat fishermen. Before we get out of here, I do want to tell y'all, uh, there's a link also in my channel for muskrat adventures. Yep. Roger's YouTube channel coming up. You got a couple hundred now? I think I don't think I've hit a hundred yet. Well, let's change that, people. Let's get him to a hundred and get him up to a thousand. Check out his channel. Link's down here, and it's also in the show notes as well. Muskrat Adventures, Roger Demet <laughs> Jr. How's that? That's me. That's right. Sub, do the thing, same thing for me in case you're just watching today. Sub, turn on the bell, notification bell. Um, Mail me that 20 bucks you owe me, and until next time, bye all you fish heads. <laughs>